Is Adam Savage still an atheist? I didn't know he was, and what difference does it make? It's things like that are the reason I haven't made any videos about creationists for so long, because they all seem to want to frame atheism as if it's a religion itself, and it ain't. Adam Savage of Mythbusters. Why doesn't he try to bust the myth of evolution? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because evolution isn't a myth, and the reason we know it's not a myth is because there's so much evidence to back it up. And as for you and the things you say, well... You can back up a phone, you can't. Please subscribe. Let's make sure I can keep giving you free videos to watch. Let's talk about something we all need. Online security, whether you're browsing, streaming, or shopping. You want to know that your data is safe. And that's exactly why I use Surfshark VPN. Now, Surfshark keeps your personal information locked down, stopping prying eyes from snooping on your online activity. But it's not just about security. It also opens up a whole world of content. Ever tried to watch a show only to find it's not available in your country? Well, with Surfshark, that's no longer a problem. You can access your favorite shows and films from anywhere at any time. Yes! Get this on, birthday girl. You're having a burn dance. So let's say you're on holiday and you're missing those comfort shows. Just connect to one of Surfshark's 3,000 plus servers across 100 countries and you're back in business. Now, security-wise, Surfshark goes beyond just hiding your IP. Their clean web feature blocks over a million malicious websites, phishing attempts, and other online threats, keeping you safe while you browse. And if you're wondering, hmm, what if it's not for me? No stress, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Try it out risk-free. So take control of your online experience today. Head over to surfshark.com forward slash creaky for four extra months of Surfshark. That's four more months of security, streaming access, and total peace of mind. Right, back to the video then. Time to make Kent Hovind look like a moron. Not that he needs that much help. Shut up and sit down, you big bald f why don't you show the myth that life started from soup? Well, Kent, Adam isn't a biologist, so busting the origin of life isn't exactly in his wheelhouse. But even I know that the scientific understanding of abiogenesis... If you know, you know. But just in case you don't, I did once accidentally say aobigenesis instead of abiogenesis. Anyway, <clears throat> But even I know that the scientific understanding of abiogenesis isn't about some magical soup spontaneously generating fully formed organisms. It's a complex process involving the gradual formation of organic molecules, protocells, and then billions of years of evolution from that point. Why don't you show the myth of the silly geologic column? The geologic column is a composite picture drawn up from multiple locations around the globe. Think of it like a world map. It's a useful representation, but you won't find the entire planet perfectly shown in one place. And the fact that certain layers are consistently found above or below others across vast distances, well, that's kind of the whole point, Kent. It tells us something about the relative ages of those rocks and the fossils they contain. You know, evidence. That thing that you seem to have a bit of a selective relationship with. Adam Savage on evolution. On the TV show Mythbusters, he expressed himself an interest in testing the concept of natural selection over creationism. I would put the ism on evolution. Evolutionism versus creation. Oh, Kent, Kent, Kent. Creationism is a proper noun, a specific belief system based on a literal interpretation of religious texts. Evolution, on the other hand, is a scientific process, like gravity or photosynthesis. We don't call it gravityism, do we? Or photosynthesisism. Evolution? It's a fact supported by mountains of evidence. Evolutionary theory explains how that process works. So no, we don't add ism to evolution any more than we add it to any other scientific concepts. Because it's not a belief system. It's a fundamental aspect of how life on Earth works. Unless, of course, you also think we should add ism to the end of Big Bang and call it Big Bangism. <laughs> Anyway, he pitched an idea to Discovery Channel, 
<clears throat> involve using explosives and duct tape to create a hybrid animal, a cabot or a kitty bunny, and observe whether it would explode. <laughs> You might want to read that again, Ken. Cabot or a kit nanny. And it was whether or not they would evolve, not explode. Adam, farmers have been doing this for thousands of years. Thousands of years. Doing what? Letting the cats shag bunny rabbits. I don't think so. Shall we shag now or shall we shag later? This mindset aligns with the principle of evolution, where species adapt and evolve through variation, mutation, and selection. Why don't you really t test that myth, Adam? Okay? So, how do creationists explain donkeys, then? <laughs> you do know that a donkey is a hybrid animal, don't you? Horses and donkeys are different species that mate with each other. The mother is a horse, the father's a donkey. So, do horses always produce horses? No. No, they don't. Horses have 64 chromosomes and donkeys have 62 chromosomes. And this difference is the major factor in defining them as different species. There's no direct mention of Adam Savage discussing historical Adam or Eve, okay? Reconciling evolution with Genesis. You're not going to reconcile the dumb evolution religion with a perfect book like Genesis, okay? Kent, trying to reconcile a literal interpretation of Genesis 1 with the vast body of scientific evidence for evolution is like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Yeah, you can force it in there, but you're going to end up with a mess and probably break something in the process. And in your case, it's your understanding of both science and nuanced biblical interpretations. Well, no, it's not just you, is it? It's everybody who's enough of an idiot to believe in creation. Genesis 1 is a theological text, Kent, concerned with the relationship between God and creation. It is not a scientific textbook detailing the mechanisms of how that creation happened. Uh, his focus appears to be on demonstrating the scientific concept of natural selection. Okay, natural selection. Look at me, Adam. It selects. It doesn't create anything. It selects from what's already available. Well, that's us told, isn't it? Kent, can you give me one example of somebody who isn't a young earth creationist claiming that natural selection creates anything? <clears throat> Adam's views on evolution are centered around the idea of testing and demonstrating the concept of natural selection through experimentation. Yay, that would be science. Rather than addressing theological or biblical interpretations of evolution. Which wouldn't be science. His approach emphasizes the power of innovation, experimentation, and adaptation, aligning with the principles of evolutionary biology. Adam, nothing about science aligns with the principles of evolutionary biology. Well, Ken, that's a pretty bold claim. Right, so nothing in science aligns with evolution. Really? Let's just tick off a few things, shall we? Genetics. DNA, the fact that all living things share a common genetic code. That's pretty aligned with the idea of common ancestry and descent with modification, wouldn't you say? Fossil records, the fact that we find simpler life forms in older layers of rock and more complex life forms in younger layers, that kind of fits with the idea of life evolving over time, right? Comparative anatomy. The fact that different species share similar bone structures suggesting a common ancestor. Vestigial organs, those leftover bits of anatomy that serve no real purpose but are remnants of our evolutionary past. Molecular biology, the fact that we can trace evolutionary relationships by comparing the similarities and differences in DNA and protein sequences. Embryology? The fact that embryos of different species look remarkably similar in their early stages of development, again, points to a common ancestor. I can go on if you want me to, Kent. So, to say that nothing in science aligns with evolution, that's either willful ignorance or a profound misunderstanding of, well, pretty much everything. So which is it, Mr. Hovind? Have you ever considered busting the myth of the geologic column. And have you ever considered changing the record? Now, because I haven't made any content about young earth creationists for such a long time, it's almost as if I'm looking at this with a fresh pair of eyes, and it's not taken me long to deduce that Kent Hovind 
does not present any arguments. His entire argument is nah uh Why don't you do a program on that? Who made up the silly idea the layers are different ages back in 1797 and really put it together in 1830? It totally influenced Charlie Darwin and still influenced the students today. And it doesn't exist. Every speck of dirt in the universe is the same age, Adam. Yeah, exactly like that. All you did then was disagree. You didn't present an alternative. You didn't put forward any evidence for your side of this argument. How do you explain petrified trees standing up, running through these layers that are different ages? How do you explain that, Adam? You act like these trees are some kind of unexplainable anomaly that defies all scientific understanding. Well, newsflash, they're not. While it is less common for trees to be preserved standing upright, it's not impossible. And we do understand how it can happen. There are a few scenarios. One is a rapid burial by a catastrophic event like a volcano eruption or a mudslide. If the tree is buried quickly enough before it's had a chance to rot and fall over, the mineralization process begins, essentially turning the tree into a stone while it's still standing. Think Pompeii, but with trees instead of people. Have you ever considered busting the myth of matter and energy in the universe coming from a dot smaller than an atom? That's what they teach, Adam. Look at that. The myth of life coming from rocks? That's what they teach. Or the myth of any plant or animal <clears throat> producing offspring other than their same kind? Or the myth of natural selection creating new kinds? Those are all myths, Adam. You ought to bust them. How about you start taking your own advice, Kent, and instead of just sitting there disagreeing with everything you read or everything a person says, try proving that your side is right and our side is wrong. And you cannot use the Bible, because the Bible is not a scientific textbook. Did the universe start smaller than an atom? European Space Agency. Time, space, and matter all began with the Big Bang. <clears throat> <coughs> in a fraction of a second, the universe grew from smaller than a single atom to bigger than a galaxy. Ah, that's a myth, Adam. Why don't you bust that? Now, in his simplest terms, and the way Kent is using it, he is using the word myth interchangeably with the word fear. So, uh, maybe you should look at the things you believe. Because that's the thing when it comes to people who accept evolution. They don't believe in evolution. They are just capable of accepting the millions and millions and millions of different ways of proving that evolution best explains how we ended up here. Why don't you call the European Space Agency and challenge them to prove how you could squeeze a cup of water? into a dot taller than an atom. There it is. The reason Kent has no clue what he's talking about, or at least he probably does know what he's talking about, but he likes to manipulate it. Who said there was a cup of water in the singularity? Nobody I feared. You seem to think that when the Big Bang happened, the universe was created exactly like it is now. But that just isn't the case, Kent. This is stupid, real stupid. How does anybody with one brain cell believe such a dumb thing as the Big Bang? Because there's so much evidence to support it that only a complete moron would deny it. Yes, boys and girls, we started like a dot and exploded and slowly here we are humans. Come on, Adam, bust the myth. You can't fit the universe in a dot. You can't fit an elephant in a dot. Well, then it's lucky that nobody except creationist morons say that. The Big Bang was the moment 13.8 billion years ago when the universe began as a tiny, dense fireball that exploded. Why don't you bust that myth, Adam? That's not possible. Then explain to us how God did it. Because Genesis 1 doesn't. Genesis 1 just says that he did. Don't forget, there's a form down in the description underneath this video so that if you want to submit the video for me to react to, you can. Um, I almost have sort of missed talking about this topic, but my brain has been so hyper-focused on the final experiment and Flat Earth for the last... Well, it's, it's been a while, isn't it, since I've made content about anything other than Flat Earth, but now felt like a good time to make a change. Don't forget, if you haven't had a look yet, I've started a new live podcast every Tuesday. 
Tuesday's episode is on the channel. It's it's in the video tab, and there's clips uploaded to Creaky Extra. Um, I know Tuesdays didn't really seem much like a podcast, but it was a, a dry run more than anything else. So um, if you're not subscribed to Creaky Extra, head over there and subscribe now. And um, if you're not subscribed yet, yeah, well, hello, sort it out, will you? Thanks for watching, everybody. Love you. Bye. Hello? Where, where is everybody? I'm, I'm the only brain cell left. So, a family is at the dinner table and the son turns to his dad and says, Dad, how many different kinds of boobs are there? And the father, surprised, answers, Well, son, a woman goes through three phases. In her 20s, her breasts are like melons, round and firm. In her 30s and 40s, they're like pears. Still nice. Hang in a bit, though. And after 50, they're like onions. Onions, the son says. And the father says, yeah, you see them and they make you cry. Now, this infuriated his wife and his daughter. So the daughter says to the mother, Mom, how many different kinds of willies are there? The mother smiles and says, well, dear, a man goes through three phases also. In his 20s, his willy is like an oak tree, mighty and hard. In his 30s and 40s, it's like a birch, flexible but still reliable. And when he's in his 50s, it's like a Christmas tree. A Christmas tree, the daughter says. Yeah, dead from the root up and the balls are just for decoration. <laughs>